The Pao Chi Kong Bin Dan, for example, is like this. <laughs> This has a meaning First thing, it. yes, there's meaning. And I'll explain to you later on. Oh, okay. And then later, that's in the morning when the exercise on neck, you can mm -hmm. do this. The inward circle. Mm -hmm. And you do the outward circle. Mm -hmm. And you move sleeping eight on infinity signs. Eight. Yeah. Sleeping eight. Right. That means sleeping eight. Ah, so. Ah, okay. infinity. <laughs> Right. I mean, this will not take the whole day, but... No. <laughs> but he did look like it was going to come yeah, the whole day. Yeah, I thought it would be late because he said he had to move slow. Move yeah. slowly. But any, every Reach of this moment, there's, any, there's actually a reason for it. Mm -hmm. For example, when I move my neck, mm -hmm. because most people don't understand. Let's say if you have a headache, you have migraine and mm -hmm. so on, mm -hmm. the problem is not in the head. Mm -hmm. The problem is in the neck. Right. So we want to loosen the neck. Oh, oh yeah. this is something I should be hearing. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Especially when you do this part of it. The, the eight. eight. Yeah, if you hear cracking sound, crack, crack, crack. Oh, uh -huh. that means, that's so yeah, relieving. That's right. It will be too tense. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So once you relieve, your headache will be gone. All right. Well, Sifu, oh. let's take a seat and talk <laughs> more you. about this. This is really, really interesting. Exciting. Sifu Tan Su Kong in the studios with us. Thank you so much for joining us. As you said, Thank a little you. bow there. Uh, let's start you off as telling us more about Qigong. What is Qigong actually? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, perhaps let me ask this question to the audience. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought of thousand years ago, when somebody they get sick, okay. what do they do? They don't have medicine. That's right. They don't have yeah. drugs yeah. and right? stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, in fact, through experience, they realize if they move in a certain way, mm -hmm. they get healthier. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, when they make certain sound, mm -hmm. they get healthier. Mm -hmm. When they visualize something, they get healthier. And when they breathe in a certain way, they get healthier. Okay. Now, see if we hold that thought <coughs> just for our viewers. 2287-2051, 2287-3051, Malaysia. You want to know more about Qigong? This is your time to know more about it. Sifu in the studios. Yep. The Colin. Sifu in the studios. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of the viewers would probably wonder what is the difference between Qigong, and Tai Chi, Kung and Fu. Kung, well, Kung Fu is martial arts, but yeah. let's head on down to mm -hmm. the softer side, as yeah. you said. Okay, that's it, a common question. What is the difference between Tai Chi and Qigong? Ken. Yeah? The main objective of Tai Chi is for the physical body. Mm -hmm. That means you do movement, you loosen your joint mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Whereas for Qigong, we emphasize on the energy part. Uh -huh. Not only the physical body, but the energy body as well. Mm -hmm. And then we also train our mind mm -hmm. and the physical body. Steven's already breathing well right now. He's yeah. Indian. Oh, uh, <laughs> looking at him, I don't think he's right. <laughs> ah, it's lessons. not right. <laughs> let, me, let me explain <laughs> to you lessons. why, Steven. Let me explain to you. Okay. Say for example, most of us, we use our chest to breathe. Right. When we breathe in, the chest come out. Mm -hmm. When we breathe out, the chest goes in. Down. Yeah. Right. That is not correct. Oh. Ah. Why is that so? If we breathe in and the chest expand, you are pushing your diaphragm up. Oh, okay. When you push the diaphragm out, the air only go into the upper loop of the lung. Right. But not the full lung. Mm -hmm. right. We never use a full capacity. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas well, if we breathe in and expand the abdomen, mm -hmm. the, the diaphragm will drop. When diaphragm go down, the lung expands to its maximum capacity. Okay. Oh, wow. And if we use the chest to breathe, we will take in each breath, mm -hmm. it's only about 500 ml of air. Mm -hmm. Or else, if we use a diaphragmatic breathing, each breath can take up to 3000 ml of air. Wow. There's a six to seven times different. Never knew breathing was this complicated. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you breathe every day. Right. <laughs> and we breathe 24 hours. Right. So, Part of the Qigong training, just like I'm talking about, you breathe in a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's what I try to say. Mm -hmm. If you can just change the breathing habit, mm -hmm. because we breathe 24 hours, yep. you are training yourself 24 hours. So when you say breathe in from, well, the stomach that is, yes. how, do you, how do you do that? Let's say for example, if I inhale, uh -huh. I expand my lower abdomen. When I exhale, I contract it in. That's all. Oh, okay. the other way around. The other way around. Ah, okay. It is not the other way around, actually. When we are born, we breathe this way. Yeah. If you watch any baby, Babies. they are all breathe this way. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Except that we have forgotten and we uh, and tend to divide into a very shadow breathing mm -hmm. and become a uh, chest breathing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, the term medical qigong, yeah. what is it about? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking about thousand years back ah, when people were exactly. using different methods mm -hmm. to get healthier. Mm -hmm. That was the origin of Qigong. And because it's for medical, for health purposes, so we refer it as medical Qigong. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then subsequently, 
as uh, time passes by, you start developing into other types of Qigong. Mm -hmm. For example, religion Qigong, mm -hmm. martial arts Qigong, mm -hmm. scholar Qigong, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. for different uh, objectives. Okay. So in medical Qigong, there are two big areas we're looking at. One is how to keep ourselves healthy. Mm -hmm. Next is how to treat other people. Right. Use our energy to help other people to be healthy. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's really medical Qigong. Mm -hmm. uh, Under your centre, how has the response been for Qigong? I mean, uh, do you actually get uh, the response from the older generation or do you get the younger generation coming in being interested in this in this kind of a treatment? And uh, You could call it like a martial arts, couldn't you? Uh, would, would you call it a martial arts? Or would you just, call it, just as a, call it a practice? Would you call it as a way of life? A way of life. Way yeah, of exactly. life. Okay, so do you, what, what, do you, what kind of response do you get? Initially, I have people of older age, mm -hmm. they have health challenges, but lately I start getting uh, young people. Mm -hmm. For example, last weekend when I run a course, I have uh, somebody as young as 17 years old. Hmm? I, was, I was very surprised. 17, <laughs> wow. One seven. Okay. And he said, uh, Sifu, I want to learn from you. I want to be like you. I want to help people to use Qigong to make them healthier. Wow. I was very, very uh, inspired by that. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll take you on personally. <laughs> make sure you'll be better than me. Oh, wow. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. 17 years old and you're already interested in this. Yes. yes. But, but what, ha what happened to him is because his parents learned from me. Uh, and then when he was uh, not feeling well at home, mm -hmm. the parent applied what he learned. Okay. And then he felt something very interesting. Mm. How can simple things like moving a hand and so on, and you get better. Mm. You know? So that's, that's why he become very interested to get to know more. Mm -hmm. yeah.